So now in this video, we're going to look at the NPN, Bipolar Junction Transistor, wired up as a switch. And so it's uh, pretty straightforward. Right now, the transistor is off. When we press the uh, mechanical switch here, now the transistor is on. And this is the schematic for the circuit. I'll do a step-by-step -step build of the circuit. I assume you're brand new to transistors if you're watching this video. But in uh, any case, as you can see here, we have the positive side of the power supply there, the negative side over there. And in series, we have a resistor, an LED, and the transistor. Now we also have another current path. Over here we have the mechanical switch and the resistor, which comes to the third pin of the transistor. Transistors are three terminal devices. And uh, so you got two for the uh, current path, and then another one for the control. We'll get to the name of those pins coming up. But in uh, any case, this one controls how well this area conducts. Specifically this area. But uh, you need to be able to conduct through here to conduct through there. They're in series. So now the uh, transistor we're going to use. This is a picture I took a long time ago. It's the 2N2222. There's also the A after there, but that just means it's a slightly enhanced version of the uh, 2N2222. Any 2N2222 will uh, work exactly the same in this circuit. There you can see it with the uh, loop. My camera doesn't really pick it up without uh, assistance there. But in uh, any case, pretty much any NPN transistor will work. If it starts with 2N, like the 2N3904, uh, then it will have the same pin layout like this. But uh, other transistors will have a different pin layout. And uh, bigger transistors will have a different case. This is the TO92 case. But in uh, any case, we have the uh, pins labeled here, the emitter, the base, and the collector. That's when you are looking at the flat side of it. And if you're not sure, the uh, pin layout, you go to the data sheet. So you just go on to Google and you hit punch in 2N2222 and then data sheet and you'll get a bunch of links to websites it takes a little while to get used to searching for data sheets but uh, sooner or later you'll find one and it will show you the pin layout so I like it when it shows it like this but sometimes it shows it like that and when it's showing it like that what that means is you can see flat side it's a uh, pin 1, 2, 3 pretty easy emitter base collector for the 2N22 and uh, this one is saying you just point it at you like that and then looking at the bottom the left pin is one middle pin is two and the right pin is three and there's also these diode testers that I really like so you see there's a bunch of little slots here this pops out by the way but uh, there's a bunch of slots there that are numbered one two and three so easiest is just to start right here and you can insert it either direction you want but I'm going to have it facing us and uh, we will lock it down and all we got to do is hit the test button and uh, it automatically tests, does everything so now you can see the schematic there one is the emitter you can see one two three EBC so emitter base collector it's telling you the gain which means for every uh, milliamp of current you put through the base you can expect about 435 milliamps allowed from collector to emitter like that and forward voltage this is basically a diode in this area and it's going to take a little less than uh, 0.7 volts before it really starts conducting that battery is the battery inside the unit it's a bipolar junction transistor NPN type and so uh, just quickly moving along, the NPN, that stands for the chemical types within the transistor. So there's three different areas. One's N-type material, one's P-type material, and then the other one's N-type material. So actually two of them are N-type materials with a, a P-type material sandwiched in between them. So the uh, middle pin for uh, the uh, 2N2222 is the base. We looked at that earlier, and as I said before, it's basically a diode here. So it's going to take 
about 0.7 volts for it to conduct. That's how we control it. We control how much current goes through there and the voltage across here. When uh, we put current through here though, that will allow the rest of the transistor to conduct. And we don't worry about voltage drop. It's a multiple of current flowing through the transistor that we apply at the base. As we saw the gain was over 400 and the uh, emitter will be the uh, more negative side of the transistor in relationship to both the collector and the base. So now this is PN type there and then PN type there. So we could flip it around and it would work. The problem is when uh, this is negative and that's positive it's going to block a lot of voltage whereas if this is positive and that's negative it's not going to block very much voltage so now I did find a data sheet for the uh, 2N2222 in the uh, plastic package here this is called the TO92 package by the way if it looks like that and it says that uh, collector to base it can be 60 volts across there for the 2N2222. The uh, 2N2222A, which we have here, can be 75 volts. Now, let's say you accidentally put it in backwards or whatnot so that the emitter is more positive than the base. Then it's only 5 volts for the 2N2222 or 6 volts for the A version. Now, from collector to emitter, let me, uh, so it's a uh, 30 volt difference from collector to emitter for the 2N2222. For the 2N2222A, which we're using, we can have 40 volts from collector to emitter. So now let's actually start building the circuit. So I have this adapter here, plugs into the outlet. I can output different voltages, and I have it set to nine volts right there. And uh, the other end of the cable, I know it's blurry, but it's nine volts other end of the cable finally comes over here and one of the plugs is a barrel plug so I just snap that under there because we have a breadboard power supply here so these came separately this uh, cable and adapter came separately from this uh, breadboard power supply and the breadboard power supply there we're putting in 9 volts you can do different voltages too and I think 12 volts is the absolute maximum but sometimes these things bump up the voltage a little bit and uh, so it's better to set it at something lower so I keep it at 9 and uh, so in any case this will power the uh, board once I plug it in and hit the switch and we have three options 5 volts where I have it now or we can move the jumper over to the right for 3.3 volts or we can center it for uh, no voltage to uh, that rail so you can set the two rails independently but I'm going to keep them both at 5 volts. So now for the components we're going to start with the transistor and ultimately you're going to set up the board the way that you like to and uh, you're going to have a couple other options I like these breadboard jumpers and there's also these wires which I'll use from time to time but uh, they make it harder to see the circuit with other people are watching the videos but I can make the exact same connection as that jumper with a, a jumper like that but uh, I'm not going to need that in this video so in any case we get uh, to the transistor and we looked up the pin layout earlier the pin on the left is the emitter and for the schematic symbol that is the one with the arrow there right there so we're going to put that directly to ground and I already have a jumper here that goes out to ground I'm gonna come back here a little bit but there you can see that uh, I'm gonna slide that in there so the emitter is to ground so the middle pin is the base now and then the top pin up here is the collector and so going along on the data sheet we have the LED so the cathode the short lead is indicated by that dash there and the anode the long lead is indicated by there so the arrows pointing the direction that conventional current will go we put the short lead the cathode where the collector is 
right there, that uh, top pin. And the uh, transistor is going to be saturated, which means it's going to let current flow freely. So we have the LED. We need to protect the LED from 5 volts. We're going to take a 220 ohm resistor and connect that directly to the uh, positive rail and the LED there. So now we come to the switch which is already in the board one side of the switch connected directly to the positive rail as you can see there and to make things a little easier to see I'm just gonna go over here so the top two pins up here are always connected I could wire something there and it will go directly to the positive rail the bottom two pins are always connected they're separated top to bottom and so we're going to take a uh, one kilo ohm resistor and we're going to set it over here where one of the bottom pins connects and then just go to the uh, middle pin of the transistor the base and uh, as you can see right there that's uh, one side of the switch to the one kilo ohm resistor and then to the base of the transistor and now we test the circuit so you can see the green LED is on so that we know the power supply is working and we hit the switch that LED comes on when I close the switch so over here I have a 10 kilo ohm resistor we're gonna do a couple of things with it first off we're gonna swap out the 1 kilo ohm resistor for the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor and it looks like the LED is just as bright so we could use a 10 kilo ohm resistor that will limit the current to one tenth of the current we were doing before going to the base which is really wasted current none of that current is actually going through the LED to help light it up it's just turning the uh, transistor on and uh, so here you can also see the other reason why I have this 10 kilo ohm resistor is that my body has enough electrical energy in it mostly due to the uh, outlets around me and stuff the household electricity that I can actually get the transistor to uh, trigger falsely and so with the uh, other schematic you can see we have a resistor that uh, goes to ground so I didn't label the stuff here other than load that's what the uh, LED and the resistor are that's our load that's what we're powering with uh, the rest of the circuit but you can see at the base we go directly down to the negative rail so this should be a higher value resistor and uh, 10 kilo ohms should uh, work nicely so we'll put it to the uh, negative rail and then to the uh, center pin the base of the transistor and that went horrible there we go pins got all bent so let's zoom in there and there you can see it's to the uh, middle pin right there and now they'll be less likely that my body will accidentally trigger it but of course the switch still works so now let's wrap this up by taking some current readings so I got the meter set to measure milliamps it's auto ranging all I gotta do is set it to milliamp and it does the rest we're gonna take the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor and uh, connect that to the uh, base of the transistor and measure that first so this will be one of the current pads that we got when we close the switch you can see it's about 0.43 milliamps which makes sense we have a 5 volt power supply minus a 0.7 volt drop of the transistor that uh, diode from base to emitter and so you take that number which would be 4.3 volts divided by 10,000 ohms of resistance and you'll get about uh, 0.43 milliamps of current now we're gonna add the LED and it's gonna be passing a lot more current so we'll have the two currents together but uh, the vast majority will be the LED and uh, the resistor so usually you uh, can pretty much tell how much current's going through the collector and emitter by directly measuring it so there you can see it's 14 point a little more than a 44 the main takeaway is a small amount of current from base to collector 
controls a lot more current flow through the collector to emitter and with this circuit it's either off fully or on fully actually I gotta move that jumper up to uh, complete the circuit we had to complete it in the through the meter to uh, take the measurements there we go but it's either off fully or on fully that's what makes it a switch circuit it's the uh, simplest circuit with the transistor probably uh, but everything that uh, we learned about the transistor in this video applies to all transistor circuits with the NPN bipolar junction transistor so it's a very educational circuit even though it's not complicated